Right, welcome everyone. I see po folks rolling in. Excited to be here today. I'm gonna allow folks to, to continue to roll in and I'll, I'll go slow on the intro so everyone has an opportunity uh, to, to get ready. Um, so welcome everyone today to joining our webinar on cloud security in a changing world. Uh, my name is Jonathan LaCour. I'm the Chief Technology Officer at Mission. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about who Mission is in a moment, but I'm also joined by Brendan Staveley, who's a Security Principal at AWS, and Dan Webb, who is the VP of Partner Sales and Alliances at Alert Logic. All right. So, uh, who is Mission exactly? Well, Mission is an AWS premier consulting partner, so we're 100% focused on AWS. We don't worry about any of the other cloud providers. Um, we are uh, the pr premier consulting partner, was their highest designation, uh, and uh, we have a variety of AWS competencies, including migrations, DevOps, uh, Microsoft workloads, and more. And we also have some designations. We're an uh, MSP as well, so we can actually manage your environment. Um, and relating to today's topic, uh, we're also SOC 2 Type 2 uh, certified as well. So I'd like to also hand it over now to Dan to introduce Alert Logic. Thank you, Jonathan. So uh, Alert Logic is a ISV, a security ISV in the category of managed detection and response. As the name suggests, we can uh, provide all of the ingredients required to detect and respond to a very wide range of threats as a managed service. We've been doing that for close to 20 years. Uh, we're an AWS partner and have been going all the way back to 2011 when we were first asked to protect a workload on Amazon Web Services platform. Uh, where we are today, we're an advanced technology partner. We hold a number of key competencies, obviously security being the most prominent of those, and have a, a wide range of integrations with native AWS security services and uh, other services that customers look for us to protect. We have an unprecedented amount of AWS security expertise within our field. and We've also enjoyed a very strong relationship with Mission for coming up to two years now, uh, as we embed our capabilities into their overall ability to help customers uh, operate their cloud environments. I'm very excited to tell you more about that as we uh, get into the next segment here. And just one last thought, uh, you know, we very much see ourselves as the leader in managed security for cloud, and that's been validated by a number of analysts. You see a quote there down at the bottom from Forrester. They did an analysis of the managed security service provider uh, landscape in Q3 of last year and uh, said that AlertLogic just keeps running circles around the competition in the cloud. So we're very proud of that. And again, looking forward to telling you more about that as we go forward. Thanks, Dan. And wow, you just uh, you made me a little nostalgic. We have been going on at this about two years now. It's uh, pretty right. incredible. So, <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about how this webinar came about, and then we'll do a little bit of uh, logistics, talk a little bit about the agenda. Um, so as, as you may have been watching the news, um, major security incidents are actually on the rise. We're hearing from many, many customers that they're very concerned uh, about kind of their security posture right now. Um, ransomware attacks are up over 100% since COVID-19 started, uh, and attackers are coming after small businesses. Why? Because there's this perception that they have a lack of security staff, uh, budgets compared to the big guys, right? Um, and this latest SolarWinds attack has really uh, heightened awareness uh, around kind of security posture. Um, and webinars are a really great format for us to educate uh, and also to engage with you, right? We can actually answer questions and really be more helpful in the context of a webinar. So um, we're gonna connect you with not only information today, but we're gonna offer you something at the end where you have an opportunity to sit down and speak a no cost consultation with an expert who can help guide you in the right path. So um, we're really excited about that. Uh, so with that said, let's dive into the agenda. Um, as I mentioned, we will have a special offer uh, after, you know, after the whole presentation today. So make sure you stick around to the end for the Q&A. Um, and we also, if you look in the GoToWebinar interface, there's a section called Handouts. And in there, you can find a data sheet on Mission MDR uh, and a shared responsibility model ebook um, that we built out with AWS. So those are both available uh, in the handout section. I encourage you to download those. Um, and what we're going to be discussing today is we're going to start with the top 10 uh, 2021 security focus areas for your security group. Then we're going to go over an overview of the AWS shared responsibility model, which is a critical uh, kind of model to understand uh, if you're going to be in AWS. Um, and then we're going to discuss the different stages of cloud maturity and how they correlate with security offers. Uh, and we're going to then review missions MDR uh, powered by Alert Logic. And we will have time at the end for Q&A. So before we dive in, 
uh, I would love to do a quick poll question, and this is anonymous, so uh, answer honestly and truthfully uh, and, and, and quickly, as if you would. Um, so let's go ahead and put that poll up. And we really just wanna understand kind of how many full-time uh, dedicated security professionals each of you may have on your teams. Um, as we mentioned, uh, we know that you know resource constraints can be a struggle for pretty much any business, especially when it comes to security. So I just wanna kind of get an idea of uh, the audience profile. And I, one of the beauties of uh, being the presenter is I get to see the answers as they flow in. So 60% uh, of you have voted. Uh, come on now, we can do better than that. I will say uh, we are having a pretty statistically significant uh, and clear winner here. <laughs> um, so let's go ahead and close the poll out now uh, and we'll display uh, the results. So as I had suspected, it looks like the vast majority of us, 98%, have less than five full-time security professionals on our staffs. And I gotta tell you what, uh, I am glad you're all here today because uh, this this webinar is absolutely designed for you. So thank you for that. Let's put the poll away and let's uh, go ahead and move on to Brendan. So Brendan, I'm gonna hand it off to you now. Thanks, Jonathan. And wow, what great attendance today. I mean, I think we had uh, something like 100 folks register and we've got over 70 people that have joined, which is, I think is a testament to how important the subject is. So first of all, I wanna start by thanking everybody for investing your valuable time this morning uh, with us to discuss securing your workloads in the cloud and how that's evolved. Now, as Jonathan mentioned, we have a lofty goal. <clears throat> At the end of this hour, it is the collective intent of everybody that's put on this webinar that everybody that participates is more effective at your job as it relates to securing your workloads in the cloud than you are in this moment right now. And that's an ambitious goal that I feel like we have the right content and the right speakers to execute on that goal. And we really welcome your feedback as the webinar progresses and also in the very important follow-on conversations as to whether or not we've achieved that goal, which again, I'm very confident we'll do. So Jonathan, if you can go to my uh, first slide, <clears throat> I always like to lead with this slide. This is the CEO of AWS, Andy Jassy, and he talks about how security and operational excellence are job zero. Now, obviously this is a great slide if you're in my position, because as a security principal of AWS, my job is to talk with customers about different techniques and strategies to secure your workloads on our platform. Um, now, I haven't been at Amazon too long. I've gone on about six months, but I had the opportunity to participate in an all hands type session with Andy. And somebody asked him the question, if you could have one priority, only one priority in the next one to two years, what would it be? And he had a fascinating answer. He said, first of all, that's a very <clears throat> difficult question because I have a lot of priorities and many of them I consider to be extremely important. But if I could only pick one, it would be security. And of course, I was very pleased with that answer. However, what he said next really struck me. He said, if we don't do that right, we don't have a company. Now that really struck me for a few reasons. First of all, I think it's great that you know your public cloud partner considers security as extremely essential, not only in securing our platform, but making sure we put our position, our customers in a position to secure whatever they're running on our platform. And that is very, very important as the number one priority that we have as a company in the next couple of years. But the other thing that I think is really important is that I think it suggests and confers empathy like we empathize with our customers that are really struggling with a very, very difficult problem. You know, Jonathan mentioned solar winds, which is uh, not unprecedented. I mean, this kind of stuff happens pretty regularly. Uh, in fact, if you rewind the clock, maybe five or six years ago, something similar happened to Juniper, where bad actors were able to infiltrate the source code of the Juniper firewall platform with unauthorized code. And just like in solar winds, whoever knew about that kind of had a back door. Now, if you look at uh, uh, the companies that were impacted by both SolarWinds and this the Juniper issue many years ago, I mean, these are some of the best equipped companies in the world to protect their digital assets. So we have a tremendous amount of empathy for our customers that are struggling with something that we think is, is very difficult. And that's part of the reason why, for the last couple of years, our chief information security officer, Steve Schmidt, has published a top 10, which goes to the next slide, uh, Jonathan. Now, we have a strong opinion about where we think people should focus their efforts as it relates to securing uh, workloads on AWS. 
the cloud is just a bit different than kind of traditional security infrastructures that run on-prem. And we like to share our opinion with our customers. And one way we do that is uh, Steve Schmidt, again, our CISO, for the last couple of years has done a top 10. I really should have had his first top 10 because that didn't go away. But these are 10 places that we really think you should invest some time and energy in thinking about you know, where your, secu your security team should focus, right? And number 10 often gets glossed over, but it's really important. Now, every, I'm not gonna go through all these in a lot of detail in the interest of time. However, uh, Steve's keynote is available. This is pretty recent. So he presented it at the re virtual reInvent conference in the last two or three weeks. Um, and he has two or three supporting slides for each one of these. And I think it's really great kind of guidance as one suggestion in terms of where you should focus. And number 10, diverse hiring and training is critical because any business outcome is derived from people, process, and technology. And that people part is the part that I think I see customers struggle with the most. And that's part of the reason I'm gonna go through the presentation that we have here today to give you some options in terms of how you combat this very significant challenge of managing your digital risk. Um, now, if you go to the next slide, we have a quote from Steve. He has a couple interesting roles within AWS. So he's our Chief Information Security Officer, or CISO, and that's uh, a very well-known kind of common role. But in addition to that, he's also the de facto owner of our security business unit, meaning the people that develop our security services, which I represent, many of them roll up to Steve. Now, that's a very unusual arrangement. You don't often see chief information security officers also owning a development organization. But the reason that actually happened is because the tools that we brought to market, um, many of them were developed by Steve's team of practitioners that were out there using these tools to actually secure the AWS platform. For example, Guard Duty. Guard Duty is our most widely deployed security service as a threat monitoring service. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Steve's team developed an in house version of Guard Duty to actually help them secure AWS. Realized, you know what? This has commercial viability. We should be able to bring this to market. Our customers can benefit from this. And so, because the innovation came from the practitioners securing the AWS cloud for our customers, it made sense that those. Uh, resources continue to report up organizationally to Steve. So that's why he is such a, a critical person um, in our, uh, our, our overall organization and why I like to showcase his focus on earning customer trust. Now, if you go to the next slide, we'll go into what is the shared responsibility model. Now, in any sort of public cloud environment, there are some things that we will own as AWS, and we work very, very hard to secure our infrastructure. We work very hard to make our infrastructure compliant. So you inherit the compliance attributes as you build upon workloads of the infrastructure, whether it's PCI or CGIS or High Trust or you name it. Uh, we've got attestations for the majority of our services where we've made the infrastructure compliant, and then you can inherit those as you build upon uh, your, your own environments, right? But there's a lot that are customer responsibility. And here's some examples of what those are. And this is a lot of work. As much as we've tried to make it as easy as possible, there's still a fairly substantial burden that customers uh, maintain to be able to secure what they're running on AWS. And if you go to the next slide, I really love this quote. Uh, this is a really funny guy, by the way, Werner Vogels. Dance like nobody's watching, encrypt like everybody is. Encryption is a classic thing where, you know, we, we really aren't the ones to decide when and how and if you should encrypt your data. We encourage you to, and we've made it as easy as we can to encrypt data at rest, in transit, and in use, but fundamentally that is a customer responsibility. And if you go to the next slide, you'll see a few other examples of responsibilities that customers have uh, in the cloud. And Jonathan, you can just sort of build this out. Now, <clears throat> there's a lot here. Now, of course, we've made the infrastructure secure. So I would submit to you that securing a workload on AWS is easier than securing a workload on-prem because of all the stuff that we've already taken care of. But again, because it's such a complex challenge, that empathy that we feel that we're all kind of battling this uh, together against a common enemy, there is still quite a bit here, like threat detection and response, for example. That 24-7 ability to monitor your environment is so unbelievably critical. I mean, no high business impact workload should be run anywhere, on the cloud, on-prem, wherever, unless you have that monitoring to be able to look out for things that might be nefarious, because in all likelihood, you know, over time that will happen. 
distributed denial of service is another thing. I mean, that's a very difficult problem to solve unless you get some help to do it. Uh, and the list kind of goes on and on. So we brought together a portfolio, which I've shown in the next slide, and you can build it out, Jonathan. So there's a few ways to handle this. You can DIY. Now, I'm not the handiest person in the world, but I know if something breaks in my house, I generally have to get external help to fix it, right? I can't do it myself. But if you do want to do it yourself, DIY is an absolutely acceptable, robust, and in many ways, very effective means of securing stuff on AWS, where you bring in whatever tools that work for you that maybe you've used on-prem or in other environments, and you run and operate them yourself. And we are spectacularly happy if customers are successful in doing that. That is a very viable option. In terms of the overall operational burden, that strategy also is associated with the highest operational burden, right? Option two after DIY is to leverage the toolkit that we've developed natively in the platform to speed up the process of helping you secure your infrastructure. Now, there's a lot of tools here, and, and it, sometimes there's so many it's tough to digest. In fact, you could argue this slide is tough to digest. But what we've done here is mapped out all of our security services against the NIST cybersecurity framework, which is the most widely adopted framework, certainly in America and I think in the world, uh, as it relates to information security. So I'm gonna spend about five minutes on this slide going from left to right and just touching on some of those natively built-in tools that we've made available if you don't wanna do a complete DIY and bring in your own kit to secure your workloads on our platform. So first of all, well, the first paradigm in, in NIST is identify, and that's really to um, develop an asset inventory and make sure you know where, where your valuable uh, data is and, and what's the state of that. And we've got a lot of services in here like Trusted Advisor and Config and Control Tower, et cetera, that are configuration security services. Uh, security Hub is one I would like to call out here, which is integrated with AWS organizations as well if you have multiple accounts. But Security Hub, from an identify perspective, actually takes a snapshot of your compliance status and evaluates by porting all your um, configuration data from config. It says, okay, your AWS environment is or is not compliant. We'll give you a score against foundational security best practices, which is an AWS own standard, uh, against PCI and against the CIS benchmark. CIS is an independent entity that's developed a benchmark for lots of stuff, including AWS. So we evaluate your environment against those industry recognized standards from a compliance perspective and then give you a score. So that's in the identify paradigm. As we move on to protect, there's a lot of very important services here, okay? We have all of our connectivity services like uh, VPC private link and direct connect and others. Uh, we also have all our cryptography services. So you'll see above the word protect in this slide, uh, KMS, which is the key management system and cloud HSM, which are both encryption utilities to again, make it easy to encrypt data at rest, in transit, and in use. Um, we also have our distributed denial of service protection service built in here, natively built into the service, which is Shield and a sister service called Shield Advance. We have our web application firewall. So we've got a lot of edge security services in the protect paradigm of NIST. Now, as we move into detect, there's four boxes, but these are sort of, uh, this is a meaty section of our portfolio. So I mentioned guard duty at the beginning. The parallel in an on-prem world, it's, it's similar to a, intrusion detection or intrusion prevention type system that might be on-prem, but that 24 seven monitoring that's a fully managed service from AWS where we evaluate things like CloudTrail, which is logging data for uh, API calls, VPC flow logs, which is basically the traffic flow, kind of similar to NetFlow in a uh, on-prem networking world and other log sources to look for specific issues that we've identified based on our threat intelligence that we generate as well as the threat intelligence that we share with our partners like Proofpoint and CrowdStrike to look for specific problems as well as to evaluate a, a behavioral anomalies. So we baseline the traffic in your environment and if something deviates from that, we alert, say, okay, this is an anomaly that you should investigate. Now this is natively built in, kind of you flip a switch, you turn it on and like many of the services I'm talking about comes with a 30 day free trial. Um, Macy is a service that helps you protect personally identifiable information. So if you're running PII and S3, there's a couple things Macy can do. If you get nothing else from this webinar, I encourage you to turn on Macy for the free trial because you can inventory all of your S3 infrastructure at no cost for 30 days. And it will tell you how many buckets do you have that are publicly facing and unencrypted? Or how many 
are encrypted but are uh, unencrypted but are available to everyone in your organization or maybe you're encrypting data that you don't need to and who's doing the encryption is it amazon supplied keys customer supplied keys it will do that for 30 days for free so there's definitely a lot of value there i encourage everybody to log into the dashboard and kind of flip that switch right now the other thing macy can do is it scans at an object level all the everything you have in S3 to look for patterns that resemble PII, like a social security number or a credit card number or whatever regular expression that you may want to look for in S3 to say, you know what, this is sensitive data that we need to make sure we take care of, right? And this is really designed to prevent um, inadvertent uh, misconfiguration that releases sensitive data. Now, in the interest of time, I'm just going to go through a couple more. I mentioned Security Hub uh, in the Identify framework. It's also in detect because Security Hub acts as a dashboard for the alerts that your AWS environment generates, whether it's from guard duty or firewall manager or one of our other services, as well as third party services, you know, like Fortinet and Palo Alto and all that sort of stuff. It can centralize all those alerts. So in that one dashboard, you have one side that says, hey, here are some alerts that you need to think about that have triggered from various systems. And on the other side of that dashboard, you see here is my compliance status showcasing where I might be most vulnerable to these particular threats, which is a very nice combination in that service that we built in. The last thing I'll mention is Detective, which is a great service that is a post-incident or potential incident, potential threat forensic utility to enable our customers to dig in after the fact when something may have happened in their environment uh, to, to look for root cause and, and things like that. Um, then we get into the respond and recover paradigm of NIST. One of the reasons I believe cloud is, is easier to secure than, uh, than on-prem is because you have cloud formation and other utilities that allow you to spin up environments in no time flat to a known good state. So there's a lot here. Now, this is the option two. DIY, do it yourself, bring in your own toolkits, option one. Again, we are very happy if our customers are effective in implementing that strategy uh, on the scale of operational burden uh, is associated with the highest operational burden. Option number two, leverage all the stuff that we have in this slide. These services are generally very cost effective. Most of them come with free trials and they're all natively built into the platform. Now it reduces the operational burden because you don't have to like go implement this stuff, but you still need uh, people to be able to care and feed and monitor and listen to and configure all these services, right? And sometimes that can be unduly complex for customers as well. Now, there's a door number three. That's another option, which we'll go into in the next slide. As I said, any business outcome is delivered from people, process, and technology. There is no shortage of technology. I mean, I live in Silicon Valley, and you can't throw a rock in downtown San Jose and not hit somebody that's working at a security startup that's using AI and ML to solve the world's problems, right? Technology is there. The technology exists to be able to protect your digital assets and put everybody in a position with a robust security architecture. The process is something that, if it's not there, is kind of a tangible thing to fix. But the people part is really the challenge, right? And that goes back to Steve Schmidt, our CISO, and who owns our Security BU. One of his top 10 for 2021 is diverse hiring and training, because that's very, very important. And the talent shortage in the information security space is exacerbating this issue for all of you that maybe want to hire security folks. Uh, and, and they're very difficult to hire. And it's not because there's not more people coming into the space. It's because as enterprises continue to digitize and make the uh, digitization a forefront like the hot topic and as people jumping in to new markets to be disruptive pursue opportunities to to drive digital relevance it increases the threat landscape right it increases your digital footprint which means it you need more resources to be able to secure that which has resulted in the number of jobs in information security it increasing at a rate that frankly the 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 industry can't keep up with even with new people pouring in right um, and that's where partners come in. Partners can really, really help. Now, after I'm done with my presentation, we're gonna have option three and four, right? So I mentioned DIY, do it yourself. Again, you can be stupendously successful with that strategy. Make sure you've got a good team doing that. Option two, leverage the natively built-in AWS security services. Very cost-effective, very compelling. Uh, the operational burden is a little bit lower because they're natively built in but still some burden in terms of managing and maintaining that infrastructure, configuring all those services, listening to those alerts and acting on them. Option three and four are with partners. And with that, I'm gonna pass it over to my good friend, Dan Webb, 
who's going to talk about how alert logic can help augment everything I talked about to, again, put all of you in a position to maintain a more robust security architecture and risk profile. Thank you, Jonathan and Dan. I'll pass it to you. Awesome. Thank you, Brendan, and for doing such a tremendous job of sharing some key best practices, foundational concepts like the shared security responsibility model that we'll revisit shortly here, and also for laying out the tremendous breadth and depth of security investments that Amazon has made. It's really incredible to see that slide every year, you know, adding new capabilities. So very, very impressive. So you can move forward here, Jonathan. Thank you. And uh, feel free to build this one out. Sorry, I should have uh, got rid of any animations up front. But um, so Brendan touched on a number of these points, but I wanted to zoom back out and really kind of take a look at some of the environmental conditions as well as organizational challenges that uh, folks are facing as they're really looking to embrace the full potential of the AWS cloud, cloud in general, uh, and address their security responsibilities along the way. So first of all, you know, we've talked about digital transformation and the great potential that it offers organizations, whether that's you know, a, a bit of a survive scenario that the organizations are in today, given everything that we've been through uh, the last year or so, or in a thrive scenario where folks are really looking at digital transformation as a means to go out and, you know, compete in the market and become leaders. Um, you know, for all the good that it offers, it does present some challenges. And obviously, you're going to make some fundamental changes to the way your business operates, to uh, the platforms that you're being required to support from a security standpoint. So making sure that you understand what that journey looks like before you embark on it and that you're well prepared to go and take those steps uh, and eventually thrive in the digital economy is very important. Uh, Brendan made a, a couple of good points about the talent shortage. Um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a real thing. Uh, I mean, I can tell you, you know, we obviously spend a lot of time as an organization that handles operational security for our customers, investing in people and developing talent and uh, finding the talent in the first place is hard. Retaining it is incredibly hard. And I think I shared a story, Jonathan, the last time we spoke about uh, you know, some of the early days of Alert Logic, we're headquartered in Houston, Texas, which is actually where I am today, and surrounded by very large, very rich oil and gas companies. And every time we'd get to a certain point and you know, have a whole bunch of folks in our SOC who are really kind of hitting their stride, you know, a bus would turn up outside with a sign saying, double your pay, and, you know, off half of them would go. So it's a very challenging uh, market, continues to be so, and as more talent is required, uh, you know, that issue becomes more and more severe for organizations. Uh, I, I love the uh, joke you made, Brendan, there about throwing a, a stone in uh, San Jose and hitting somebody that works for a security startup. Uh, I think you'd run out of stones before you run out of people to hit, quite frankly. Um, so there's good and bad with that, right? I think there's a, a lot of great technology that's being developed, but I think with that comes you know, just, uh, just a myriad of options that people uh, have in front of them in terms of how they can solve for their security challenges. There's a lot of tools out there. There's a lot of different ways to solve what seems, at least on paper, like the same problem. Um, I don't know if any of you have had the privilege or pleasure of walking the hall at the RSA conference uh, in San Francisco. I've done it many, many times, and I can tell you as the years go by, you know, lots of the same messages, lots of the same graphics and, and visuals, uh, and then when you kind of dig underneath it, they're all doing it completely differently. So I can understand how this can create a challenge for, for organizations who are really trying to work out, you know, how do I go about solving my challenges in the most efficient, cost-effective, and, and yeah, ultimately successful way. And then, unfortunately, the bad guys keep getting better at what they do, right? I think you've seen that, you know, Jonathan, as you laid out some very um, you know, high profile um, you know, breaches that have happened over the last couple of months. Um, you know, they're going to continue to evolve and, and they're using all the same technologies that are available to, to us on the, on the defender side. You know, they're starting to embrace things like AIML that you mentioned, Brendan, uh, to really automate some of their attacks. You know, it's just increasing in terms of uh, you know, just the sheer volume of, of people involved in, in this type of activity and, uh, you know, really just the, the skill sets are improving, the, the, the means they have uh, to attack your organization just continue to get more sophisticated. So uh, the threat isn't going away and it's just going to increase in, in scale and presence. You can move on, Jonathan. So if you look at the, the typical challenges an organization has to face, um, you know, firstly, compliance for, for, for most organizations is a cost of business, whether that's, you know, addressing a, a regulatory a compliance mandate that you might have in the market that you're looking to serve, or if it's more of an internal uh, set of best practices or compliance standards that you're looking to adhere to. Uh, it's a complex subject. It's resource intensive. It's costly to, to achieve compliance states and, and even costlier to maintain it, right? I think we're finally out of the, the phase uh, of the journey where folks just saw this as a one-time exercise. I think everybody realizes now it's an ongoing responsibility, but it, it's uh, you know, increasing in, in sophistication and, and in resource drain and burden, quite frankly. Um, you know, it typically requires serious expertise within your business or you know, never-ending uh, resources to throw at the problem. Um, cloud adoption has become a really interesting challenge for the CISO and for the security organization. 
I think gone are the days where security can afford to be viewed as an insurance policy or a cost center. It really has to be viewed as an enabler. And, and there's no place where that's more uh, relevant than in the journey to the cloud and in ensuring that you know the cloud program within the business is successful. Uh, I think if you are able as a security function to really align with the goals of the business and understand the challenges being faced by your developers and by revenue generating functions and understand the role security has to play in enabling the outcomes they're looking for whilst maintaining you know, a healthy balance of managing risk, then you're in a good spot. If you're still the department that says no, good luck with that. Uh, I don't think that's going to last for much longer. So, um, and then, you know, with that comes the, the the need to be able to detect and respond to an ever increasing, you know, threat landscape. And uh, obviously with moving goalposts as, you know, uh, platforms that you're asked to support change and other aspects that can really kind of make this a, a moving target. Um, you know, that's uh, again, something that requires you to have the right technologies in place. Uh, but to Brendan's point, if you don't have the people in the processes to knit all that together and make it something that your business sees value in and that you can provide the outcomes they're demanding, then it's going to be very hard to, to execute on that mission. And then a continual understanding of risk, both external and, and internal risk, uh, is key, right? And that comes down to visibility, it comes down to alignment, comes down to understanding, uh, you know, what is the healthy amount of risk for you to tolerate as a business in order for you to be able to grow and, and sustain in, in the current uh, economy. So moving on, please, Jonathan. Learn to complement as you that as you start to embrace the cloud, some specific challenges or concerns can arise. And uh, you know, this is a generic statement, so I don't want to give uh, an impression that you're necessarily going to find yourself facing each of these challenges. And obviously, as Brendan very clearly articulated, Amazon thinks about this all day, every day, and has done a tremendous job in making sure that these challenges, if you do face them, are, are easy to address. But we do see consistently customers as they start to really start to move workloads over to the cloud, um, really start to first, you know, have to consider visibility that's the most important thing from a security standpoint if you can't see it you can't protect it so making sure that you understand the operating environment that you're being asked to secure that you have visibility even if it's evolving moving transforming um, so that you can you know maintain uh, a good security posture is really the most foundational aspect of security as you move to the cloud uh, one piece we see again consistently uh, kind of playing out as organizations particularly migrate from traditional uh, data center environments into the cloud or from maybe a hosting provider into the cloud is, is really that requirement for transformation from a technology standpoint. Now I get it, you know, you've probably got a bunch of tools that you've used for a number of years and you're in some ways wedded to those technologies, but you really need to take the time to understand which of those are able to come with you on the journey and which aren't. You know, I can share a funny story from the early days. I've been working with AWS customers on the subject of security all the way back to 2013. And I do vividly remember sitting in a room with an Amazon account manager and his customer and the customer asking, you know, how much rack space they could get in a, an Amazon data center for the uh, technology that they had in their data center that they'd need to take with them as they start to move workloads to the cloud. So you can imagine uh, how that conversation went. But luckily, I think we're past that point, but there has to be a recognition that traditional technologies were built for a very different operating environment than the one you're going to be moving into as you embrace the cloud and look for the opportunity to drive efficiencies and you know, positive uh, transformations into your overall security operations. It's a great time to do that. And it's obviously going to make it a lot easier for you to embrace the full potential of the cloud when you get there. And then this third piece is the hardest of all. I mean, we've talked about the skills gap, generally speaking, from a security standpoint. Now, try and go find somebody with, you know, three or four years of cloud security expertise. You know, those are unicorns, right? And they're very hard to find and very, very expensive, I can tell you. So, um, you know, having that um, capability in-house, if that's the, the, the path you want to go down, uh, obviously requires a lot of investment in, in the people uh, that you're going to have take on that responsibility for you. But it's also a good opportunity for you to sit back and again assess do I really need to have this capability in-house or does it make sense for me to maybe start to look at the overall set of security responsibilities and divvy them up between ones I can handle in-house or ones I can offset uh, to a partner and you know using Brendan's kind of numbering convention you know there's probably a stage three and a stage four three is I need some of this uh, operational responsibility to go away maybe the undifferentiated heavy lifting to borrow a Werner Vogel's phrase uh, or stage four is, hey, I'm looking at this thing and just realizing that this is beyond us and just not in line with our priorities as a business. Let's look for a way to offset as much of this risk. And we're going to cover both of those as we move forward here. You can go forward, Jonathan. So now if you lay those challenges out against really the kind of three understood phases of cloud adoption, the first really being migration or launch, you know, whichever way you want to look at it, you're either taking something from a place where it exists today and moving it into the cloud, or you're taking an idea from your mind and putting it into execution and actually launching those workloads in your business. Um, really, it comes down to understanding how you can you know, get into those early stages of cloud adoption, embrace it uh, whilst minimizing risk. So how do you safe, safely explore the full potential of the cloud? How do you move those first workloads over? How do you build 
confidence within your business that this is a good idea, a good strategy? How do you avoid full starts, pitfalls, things that could undermine all of this hard work and planning that you've hopefully been doing in the lead up to this exercise? Really, really critical phase. You'd be amazed how many projects we see fall over at the first hurdle just because they haven't really got aligned internally. They haven't thought it through. They haven't you know, worked out that they're not going to be able to go and rack their firewalls into Amazon's data center. Still, still a joke, that one. But uh, yeah, they haven't really thought these challenges through and, and really need to um, you know, address them quickly, ideally before they become an issue. Then as you really start to you know, get a feel for uh, what the cloud represents as an opportunity for transformation and modernization, it's really then about, you know, you're, you're in the race at this point. You need to maintain velocity. The business is starting to see some of the benefits. You know, you're really starting to, uh, you know, modernize and, and, and transform the way that you engage with your customers and your stakeholders. And no one wants to slow that down or step back from that. So then it's really about how does security evolve to keep pace as you start to make some of those transformative uh, changes? You know, are you moving towards major app modernization strategies like containers or microservices? If so, how does security need to evolve, not just from the point that you evolved it to to get to the cloud, but now you've got another phase of the journey that you need to get through and continuously evolve and improve. And then once you've you know really been there for a while and started to really see the full benefits, it then becomes about you know that continuous cycle of optimization, looking back and looking for ways you can gain additional efficiencies. There, there might be a point in time where as a business, you, you take a step back and you've maybe had the DIY approach up to that point and, and you say to yourself, is this really you know what we need for the next phase of our growth? Does that scale? If we're going to go and launch because of all the greatness, you know, great opportunities that Amazon's unlocked for us, we're going to go launch into two new markets and three new geographies next year. What does that look like from a DIY footprint if I'm going to build that out myself from a tools and you know, headcount and, and operational resources standpoint? Does it make sense to pivot and, and move towards a model where maybe you know, we can shift towards uh, outcomes versus capabilities that we manage ourselves? Moving on, please, Jonathan. So it all comes back to the concept of the shared security responsibility model. And Brendan, you did a great job of sharing the, the Amazon view of that. You know, we've had a, a slight twist on that that we've been talking about for a few years here that really takes the concept and then you know breaks it down into some very well you know, known and understood uh, security requirements or capabilities that an organization would need to look to address either themselves or, or with help. So the concept does not change. Again, Amazon is responsible for the platform and everything underneath it and making sure that it's provided to you in a secure state. But then as you start to embrace all of that capability to build out your workloads and your applications, then all these responsibilities suddenly surface. And there's a blend here, as you can see, between you know real kind of technology capabilities that you're gonna to need to solve for in some way or the other that provide uh, capabilities to you that you need to operationalize with people and good processes. There's some policy decisions here. There's really just you know a whole bunch of things uh, that need to be considered. Um, and if you're looking at this list and feeling a little bit nervous, I can understand that, you know, it is uh, somewhat daunting when you look at this as a set of capabilities you have to solve for and responsibilities. The good news is, as we've mentioned, there's multiple different ways to skin this cat. And we're going to talk a little bit about kind of option three, as Brendan would put it, which sees, you know, a, a large chunk of that operational responsibility being handed to AlertLogic uh, to really give you the, the ability to detect and respond to a wide range of threats and be able to also continuously maintain a good security posture in the cloud. We can move on, please, Jonathan. So it really is, in summary, kind of how we help organizations uh, you know, embrace the cloud and, and handle those security responsibilities. So we have a proprietary technology platform that's actually built on AWS, and we've been an AWS customer for a number of years and uh, you know, enjoy a very strong relationship from a, a product collaboration standpoint, both in terms of improving our products and obviously integrating with AWS's native services to make sure that we can continue uh, to stay at the front of the pack in terms of the competition from our standpoint, but more importantly, focus on all the outcomes uh, that customers are looking for when they've decided to go down the path of you know, offsetting some of those responsibilities to a company like us. So it means that we need to make sure that we can cover as much of uh, the, the infrastructure platforms assets that they're gonna have uh, in the AWS cloud, that we can extract as much information from uh, that set of assets as possible using our own capabilities, as well as integrations with tools like Guard Duty that Brendan mentioned, that we're then able to analyze uh, the widest possible range of uh, threats using the data that's been provided to us through those capabilities I mentioned, and then most importantly, that we provide the human expertise to be able to then uh, you know, take the output from our technology, determine what action needs to be taken and hand that back either to a customer or to a partner like Mission, uh, who can then go and take those actions. And as a result of that, uh, we're able to give complete visibility. We're able to allow customers to maintain um, you know, best practices from a configuration and a vulnerability management standpoint so that they're continuously uh, hardening their environment and maintaining their hygiene. And we're able to provide them with the security outcomes they need to maintain a very wide range of compliance standards and ultimately, you know, really just you know, put them on the path to cloud success by removing any barriers 
you know, in, in accelerating them towards their goals uh, and ensuring that they can sleep at night with peace of mind that their cloud environments and hybrid environments, quite frankly, are going to be uh, secure. And all of that's provided as a, as a managed service by AlertLogic. You can move on, Jonathan. So this is really how we kind of map back to that uh, security responsibility model. So the, the capabilities in Orange are really where AlertLogic steps in with the help of the customer, of course, to take some of those uh, responsibilities off your plate. And, and, you know, if you're following the narrative here and you've had a chance to look at this in detail and understand, you know, what we're taking on uh, on behalf of our customers, these are really some of the most complex and resource intensive uh, responsibilities that typically do require you to, you know, if you were going down the DIY path, you know, build out a, a defense in depth type strategy, lots of layers of technology that kind of give you visibility at all layers of the stack. Uh, obviously, getting those technologies tuned, configured up to the point where they're going to be you know, viable and useful in the environment. You're then building out a team that's capable of running 24 7 security operations, you know, estimates on what that requires, anywhere from 10 to 20 people. Um, you're obviously then, you know, knitting together all the operational processes that are required to take the output from those technologies, have the people enrich it and turn it into, uh, you know, uh, actions that the organization can take that are going to protect them. So, you know, it is heavy lifting. But we're very, very good at it and we can take on a large portion of that, uh, as you can see here. You can move on. So let's look back at those three stages of the journey and kind of how we map back to those from a capability standpoint. So firstly, from a migration standpoint, we're experts truly uh, in the subject of, of cloud security, particularly as it relates to AWS. As I mentioned, 2011 was when we were asked to protect our first AWS workload, which doesn't seem like a long time in normal years, but in Amazon years, it's a, it's a lifetime. And yeah, we've been on the roller coaster for a long time and uh, continue to keep pace and look for opportunities to, uh, like I said, in, enrich our knowledge and our, our, our solutions uh, through collaboration with AWS and their partner ecosystem. So we bring the expertise to the table. Uh, you know, our organization understands everything from how to ready yourself for a migration and prepare um, you know, everything you need to transform your security capabilities right the way through to, you know, obviously being able to uh, identify the threats that might be facing your organization, and help you solve for those um, with, you know, active defense. Uh, we can cover the breadth and depth of AWS services as well as obviously extending that out to hybrid uh, and multi-cloud should you require that. I'm really giving you the means to make sure that you're not going to fall foul of any you know breach activity or or compliance um, you know impacting activity during that critical phase of the migration so that you can prove the success of the cloud get the business bought in and really go all in from a modern modernization standpoint you know making sure that you've got as i mentioned the ability to continuously uh, harden the environment tighten up and and you know ultimately not you know configure or, or manufacture vulnerabilities yourselves that's one of the the, the downsides potentially of uh, you know, really just the breadth and depth of opportunities that are available to you to do things in a different way to how you've done them before. That if you really don't understand best practices as you're going into that effort, it's very easy for you to make mistakes that could be exploited by attackers. So making sure that you're continuously uh, enforcing best practice and minimizing that risk is key. Same from a vulnerability standpoint and ultimately, as we said, allowing you to accelerate towards those transformation initiatives, which is really where you see the big returns on your cloud journey. And then in that optimization phase, uh, very proud of, of AlertLogic's history of really pioneering DevOps and container leadership. As an example, we actually invented uh, network intrusion detection for containers and launched that alongside the AWS container competency back in 2018. We've continued to iterate on that to the point where now our MDR solution is really available across all of AWS's uh, container services, regardless of if you're going to be managing those containers yourself or looking for a managed service like Fargate. Um, and again, the, the continual investment on our side in native integration uh, means that, you know, should a, a new disruptive game-changing capability, in fact, not should, when uh, Amazon releases another game-changing capability into the market, you can uh, guarantee that we'll be ahead of it and, and in a position where we can ensure that you can extend our security capabilities into that new operating model as it appears. So uh, at length, I've explained to you how that option three works. Uh, if you are looking to take on, you know, less of the operational responsibilities, but still want to maintain some control, uh, over some of the, the policy aspects, as well as also, you know, taking the actions yourself uh, in terms of how you then apply those, um, you know, recommended actions that come out of our solution in your environment. If you are, you know, still looking at that and feeling like that feels like, um, you know, more responsibility than you can handle or that, that your company desires to invest in, then the good news is we've collaborated very successfully with Mission to build out a joint solution that takes the best of AWS, the best of AlertLogic, and wraps uh, missions, you know, dedicated expertise in all things cloud and operations around it. I'm going to give Jonathan a chance to explain that to you so you can really understand uh, how they can provide you with an overall outcome that just leads to great cloud success. 
Thank you, Dan. Good intro there. And uh, just a quick order of business before we dive into that. Um, I, I have seen questions start to roll in. If you, we're going to get to Q and A really, really soon. So, um, you know, gather all those questions and go to the Q and A section of the GoToWebinar interface and start adding those questions. Uh, I'm looking forward to answering them. So, uh, as uh, Brendan actually did a great job of showing the kind of different paths down, uh, you know, to the security journey that companies can take uh, from a DIY approach to a fully managed approach and everything in between. And uh, uh, before I talk about what Mission can do with this kind of fully managed approach, um, you know, we're not here to tell you that any one approach is right. We're here to tell you that you need to make sure you're covering all of uh, the breadth and depth that we saw in that shared responsibility model, right? So uh, it's definitely not a prescriptive uh, view from us. We just want you to know the options. Um, and uh, one of the biggest struggles that uh, businesses face is actually making that security priority and focus without distracting from other kind of initiatives and core competencies that they may have. Um, and, and in our experience, uh, a lot of companies are trying to achieve these requirements, but they have, you know, a lack of in-house expertise, the talent draw or talent shortage that we, we, we have discussed earlier. Um, maybe they can't provide a full 24-7 coverage. Um, there's a lack of tooling and technology for them as well. And Mission MDR is really about bringing all those things together to enable you to meet those security and compliance goals without having to build out a SOC from the ground up. Um, so the key thing here is it's a, it's a collaboration between Mission, AWS, and Alert Logic. Um, so our team will instrument your AWS environment with Alert Logic's market leading detection technology, um, providing you deep insights and visibility into your environment. We'll enable a lot of the AWS native security services as well. And with the advanced threat detection, um, it's constantly evolving and keeping pace with the, you know, with malicious actors as they evolve as well. Uh, and then that tooling is combined with people, right? And so uh, Alert Logic has a 24/7 SOC, which is staffed by a team of incredibly talented, hard to hire and retain security experts. And similarly, Mission has a 24/7 team of highly qualified AWS infrastructure experts, all certified. Um, and so between our two teams, we come together uh, and apply the technology and process to respond uh, and provide managed detection and response uh, in a 24 seven motion. Um, so let's look at what that looks like in practice. So uh, a threat is first detected by the Alert Logic platform. As I mentioned, we have instrumented your environment uh, and Alert Logic uh, identifies a threat. Uh, at that point, uh, if it, if it rises to a level of an urgent and critical threat, uh, the alert logic SOC will be, um, uh, you know, kind of activated and we'll start evaluating and reviewing the threat. Um, and alerts are also immediately dispatched uh, to mission and to you. And our AWS experts will respond and collaborate with the alert logic SOC. And together we have the you know, expertise of how to interpret the information coming out of Alert Logic from the uh, Alert Logic SOC. And then we have missions AWS experts who can then action and remediate um, those recommendations provided by Alert Logic. Uh, finally, uh, we, we, we collaborate together to neutralize that threat all while you're asleep, right? <laughs> That's kind of the idea here. And so you can see this is that, that breadth of, of options for you. Um, so, just uh, we haven't had an opportunity to kind of look at what Alert Logic looks like in practice. So, um, just a couple of quick uh, screenshots and kind of an overview of the the platform itself. Um, so, you get these uh, amazing customizable dashboards. They summarize vulnerabilities, threats, incidents, and system health. Um, and in addition, you get this very slick top, uh, topological map of your AWS environment. Really helps you identify and quickly drill into vulnerabilities. Uh, especially when you have an active threat. Um, and this is what our team uses um, while we're working with you to, to kind of uh, neutralize threats. Um, you can actually drill down into recommended remediations. They provide really great uh, information about how to action those things. Um, and for the detail oriented, you can also view open exposures and incidents in kind of a list view, uh, ability to dig even deeper into detail, track open incidents. It's a really powerful platform. Um, and finally, there's some uh, really fantastic compliance reporting. So if you're interested in kind of checking yourself against PCI, HIPAA, High Trust, SOC 2, uh, and more, you have those capabilities built right there into the platform. 
and uh, of course, a powerful automated unified and searchable log ag platform. Uh, this is really useful for accelerating incident response. Um, that's what it's really all about here is, is uh, minimizing that time to remediation. Um, so with that, let's quickly talk about a customer success. Uh, and uh, I'd like to share a story about a fintech startup called All of Us Financial. And uh, they've actually leveraged the Alert Logic MDR platform to rapidly improve their security posture. And they were looking for kind of enterprise grade security, but like many small businesses, they had limited resources. Uh, they wanted to do it right from the start and they didn't want to sacrifice their need to be kind of nimble innovators, right? That's what a startup needs to be. <laughs> and they wanted to ensure that they were able to achieve those goals in a way that would scale with their business as they continue to grow uh, and, and, and see success. So enter Alert Logic, um, and as we reviewed there, that that MDR platform uh, provides a lot of that people, process, tools, and technology to come together to help them achieve their goals. And now they have 24/7 coverage without adding any headcount to their own team. Uh, they're able to focus on the innovation while still having a strong security by design mindset. And I think the CISO of All of Us Financial summarized it really nicely. He said. Uh, with MDR, we save time by only having to deal with the curated security issues that are thrown our way. My team can focus on what's most important to our business, delivering the best product as fast as possible. So that's what it's really all about. Uh, faster time to market with limited resources and without sac sacrificing security. So finally, um, I want to talk a little bit about how Mission can help. So uh, we did go over Mission MDR. That is one way we can help. Um, but if you choose to just implement the native AWS security tools, you need help doing that, um, and then you want your team to kind of provide the 24-7 coverage, we absolutely can do that with professional services, right? Um, we can help you with migration, configuring your infrastructure as code, CI, CD pipelines. Um, and then we have a full suite of kind of managed services as well. If you want Mission to take on more of the responsibility, um, we can take on uh, cost optimization, we can take on management of your operations and your environment, um, and also of your DevOps uh, kind of life cycle uh, and AWS support. So we're a, a full service shop. Now, no matter which of these kind of four different paths you choose, we encourage you to choose one and uh, go after it. We can help with that. Um, so, uh, before we enter into Q&A, just real quick, um, we I want to remind you that there are, are handouts attached with an ebook and a data sheet, uh, and um, there will be a uh, an offer here, uh, which is effectively a complimentary AWS infrastructure and IT operations security review. So. Um, you will get a one-hour consultation with a mission SA. Now, they're there to guide you down the right path, okay? They're not going to, um, uh, they want to make sure that we meet your goals, right? So, if you're looking to do it all in-house, we'll recommend you that, uh, the right path to do that, right? And we will collaborate very closely with your AWS uh, rep as well, right? We want to make sure that we're all working together uh, to help you solve those challenges. So, let's get to Q&A real quick. Um, so I've already seen a couple of great questions, and I'm gonna throw this one out to the group. Uh, Tim asks, the breadth of options is very large, uh, large in all caps, and I think uh, Tim is absolutely right. Lots of different ways to solve many issues. It seems like the cloud providers are always adding new services that they want us to think we need. As a small organization with limited resources, how do you decide what is the best way to stay secure in the cloud? Great question. Jonathan, I think I can, uh, I can, I can take that one. <clears throat> So first of all, Tim, thank you very much for the question. Um, I agree with you wholeheartedly. The breadth of options is is very large, uh, and you know, as as we continue to innovate security services, if you think there's a lot now, uh, we probably have another dozen or more that are kind of cooking that will be released over the next couple of years. Um, you know, they're all designed to solve a particular problem, and and I think or a set of problems. But I agree with you. It, it can be very insurmountable, and I've talked to especially SMBs, uh, small and medium businesses that are sort of the lifeblood of our economy. And um, we'll, you know, a, a handful of those will be the next major enterprises. Uh, you know, it's, it's a lot to take on. And, and that's why I uh, want to reinforce that you do have options. Like if you've got the expertise, the talent, the team, you can do it all yourself and you don't need anything that we talked about. And I am perfectly happy if you are able to do that effectively that is music to my ears because really my desire is that our customers are secure. Um, if 
you do have some expertise, you can take on some of those native services. And I mean, imagine if you were trying to do all the slide I showed you with all those boxes. Imagine if you had a third party in, instead of all those boxes, that would be even more burdensome to take on. But I recognize that even if they're natively built in services, that's a lot, that's a big burden. I mean, if you've got a few folks in IT that are kind of doing everything, they can't manage you know, 20, 30 security services and try to get them all configured properly and work together. And that's why you have partners like Alert Logic that you know, through their offering, kind of make it a little simpler, right? And they take on a little bit more of the responsibility for you. And if you really want to outsource it, and I would recommend everybody seriously entertain this, unless information security is your core competency. If it is, awesome, then you maybe don't need our help. If it isn't, I encourage you to focus on your core and outsource the context, right? And that's where Mission comes in, in combination with Alert Logic, can really deliver kind of a white glove, almost completely outsourcing, or at least outsourcing a good chunk of the responsibility that you have around securing your cloud uh, to experts that do this all day long. I, I totally concur that this is a difficult problem to solve. We empathize as AWS. That's why Andy Jassy said, if we don't get this right, we don't have a company. Um, we know it's a difficult problem, which is why we've aligned with some of these great talented people to help you to connect the dots so you don't have to sort of deal with it yourself. So that would be uh, my, my recommendation as you're kind of facing this very complex problem of managing your digital risk, seek help if you need it, right? And, and I think if you don't need it, then wonderful. And you know what you're doing. Most, the vast majority of the time, even some of the largest companies in the world, I mean, I talk to folks that are, you know, Fortune 50 enterprises that are like, man, we have no idea how to solve this particular problem. And they leverage some of the same resources that I'm suggesting that, uh, that you all leverage as well. I love the point you made, Brendan, about the core competency piece. I think this gets lost sometimes. And, you know, the way I like to think about it is, if there is an hour, a minute, uh, a dollar, uh, a headcount, a resource that you're spending on something that isn't your core competency, then why, right? And sit back and kind of ask that question. So yeah, I think you really need to measure just how, you know, how aligned to your core competency, competency security is if it's not your core competency, and then work out how much of those investments you're willing to make to get the outcomes that you want, right? I think it's a good way to think and, about it. Absolutely. And the critical thing about that, a lot of people are often concerned, it's like, well, am I really making security a priority if I'm, if I'm, you know, taking some of those things and not making my core competency? And the answer is, is absolutely not, right? By making an active choice to address all of these gaps that you might have internally, you are making a big priority of it. You're just choosing to do it in a different way, right? And I think there's a lot of sensitivity around that, especially as technologists. We all uh, believe we can solve any problem with the, with the right amount of time and resources, right? Um, and this is, uh, you know, I think it's important to note this is just one way to solve it, right? So uh, take take advantage of the full spectrum of options available. All right, well, one last next question. On that, Sorry, okay. so I was just gonna make one last comment on that before you move on. I think, you know, one important thing to note is in any of the models that we've described, accountability will always still sit with you as, as the customer, right? So ultimately the policy decisions you make and you know, the impact it's gonna have on your business is still in your control. It just really determines how much of that kind of operational responsibility you want to take on. Exactly. Well said. All right. Uh, the next question from Tim he had a follow up. Um, what is the number one thing every organization should do to prevent ransomware in the cloud? I, I can take a stab at this. I mean, I, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I don't think there is one thing that you can do, right? There's a lot of things that you need to do and they all need to kind of be, you know, aligned and integrated to make this a success. Um, I think, first of all, it starts with, you know, we talked about visibility as just the, the absolute foundational principle of security. If you have assets out there, regardless of where they are, cloud or anywhere else, and you can't see them, chances are someone else can, and they're going to find a way to get to them before you do. So I think start there, make sure you have an ability to see everything that you need to be responsible for protecting within your environment. Then make sure you've got the necessary, you know, protective and detective controls in place to make sure that if, you know, you are unlucky and someone targets you with ransomware, that you can see it, you can respond to it quickly. Hopefully you can take a, an automated action that means it's never a problem. If you can't, then the most important thing is how quickly you respond and, and what action you take and uh, making sure that you're you know, moving with purpose to resolve any uh, issues that it's causing your business. And of course, making sure that you've got you know, a fallback plan if you know, those steps aren't successful and that you've been successful in backing up you know, key information and data in your business so that if you do have to revert back to a prior state, that it's not gonna hurt your business too badly. So no, that wasn't one, but I think those are all key points. Um, I don't know, Brendan, if you've got anything to add to that. I would just add that, uh, it, it, although it wasn't on my list of uh, my slide with all those boxes of services, uh, AWS does have a service called Cloud Endure, 
which is essentially facilitates the backup piece. I mean, there is no, the only real silver bullet in ransomware is if you have a very, very robust backup strategy and you don't care if something gets in, infected because that's really the, the right answer. Whatever you do, don't pay the ransom. The vast majority of the time, you don't get your computer back anyway. Um, so, so backup is kind of the last line of defense. And if that's done exceptionally well with a lot of discipline, uh, that should pretty much take care of it. Or you can migrate your business well, to a computer. Well, and, uh, go offline completely. That's probably the other alternative, right? <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, uh, just a note on that is this is absolutely a place where Mission can help. Um, so if you if you don't have a backup strategy, um, we do have a service called Mission Cloud One. We actually take over management of the environment. We implement automated backups uh, based on your uh, kind of requirements. So lots of good options here. Um, I think we're reaching the end of our time for the day, but before we close, I want to throw up our last poll um, just to kind of gauge how we did today. So let's go ahead and put that up. There we go. And so the question is, now that you've attended today's webinar, uh, where would you say that you are at in your cloud security journey? Um, whether you're uh, ready to manage the environment yourself or you need additional prog uh, help managing your environment. All right. Ooh, look at you all very rapidly uh, uh, responding. Appreciate that. I'll give you a couple more moments here. All right. Wonderful. Okay. I did see one more question uh, rolling in. Um, it was around, uh, let's take a look at the uh, results real quick. It looks like about 54% of you are ready to manage the environment on your own, and 46% would like additional help. And that's actually great. That's in very encouraging. Both of those outcomes are good outcomes, uh, and we're happy to help no matter what. So I do want to remind you real quick um, that you can request a one-hour complimentary security consultation with the Mission SA. Um, there is a link there at the bottom, missioncloud.com, aws-security-review. Um, and uh, this will be available in a recorded format for those of you who would like to watch it again. Um, but I definitely would encourage you to download the attachments that are on the, the webinar today uh, and uh, sign up for this complimentary security review. As I said, our goal is for you to achieve your security goals um, and we're gonna guide you down a path that makes sense in alignment with uh, your AWS account rep uh, in a way that makes sense for your business. So with that, I'm gonna thank Brendan and Dan this was an amazing and very engaging webinar. Thank you all attendees for your wonderful questions. And we look forward to hearing from you soon. Thanks folks.